Hi everyone at Modern Drummer. This is Brendan Buckley and you're here with me checking out the drum set for the Morrissey Tour. So, let me go through the drum set. If you really want to get into the nitty gritty, here is my wedge. This is, uh, although I wear in-ear monitors, this is the wedge that, the speaker that points at me and plays tracks loud enough and, and instruments loud enough where I can hear it and I can feel it because in-ear monitors kind of don't really give you a lot of volume or oomph, I guess. And then we have a Roland SPDSX. This one's custom painted white. It plays all the samples that we use for the show. We probably know over a hundred songs in the set list that we rotate. And a lot of the songs have little samples like, let's see if there's one here. You are sleeping. You do not want to believe. You are sleeping. You do not want to believe. Classic one. Down here is a little uh, foot switch that we use uh, to run tracks uh, off the side of the stage. We don't have a lot of sequences in this gig, but the few songs that have little backing tracks, this will start and stop it and it lives over in the uh, drum technician's world. Alrighty, what else do we have here? 13 inch snare. I have a kind of tune like a tim timbali today. Mounted tambourine. We got a 12 inch splash, 17 inch crash. These, this is eight, uh, Sabian HHX Legacy. These are 14 inch Sabian groove hats. You want me to get that specific? <laughs> okay, little stick holder, drum key, stuck to the hi-hat stand just in case. I like DW5000 pedals, so we got a hi-hat and a double pedal here. Uh, yep, we got uh, this, this kit is a DW stainless steel kit. Uh, I think I got it in 2017. Uh, the, the toms are 13, 16, and 18. The snare drum is a PDP, it's a Pacific, which is a DW uh, nickel over brass. Uh, this is also a six and a half by 14 inch snare drum. This one is my uh, Black Beauty. And then we have a Legacy HHX 22 inch ride. This is a, did I say this was 17? This is an 18 inch crash, this is a 19 inch crash. I like 18 and 19 normally both legacies. This one is a 19 inch Paragon China. This is a little stack that I've been using on and off since maybe, I don't know, maybe 2002. I got this. This is a, a 14 inch China on the bottom and a 12 inch mini hat on top. Kind of like that. A little bell tree from LP. That's just an effect. I've also had that forever. I don't even remember when I got that. What else do we have? Uh, the beaters on this pedal are specially made for me by Low Boy Beaters, so I, I dig these. They feel pretty good. We got a uh, little holder for a bottle of water. This is my stick bag, all Vic Firth stuff. These are my sticks that they made me that are white for this tour. They're just five A's with my name on it, but they're white. And we got mallets for the, for this gong bass drum that we have here. I think this is 24 inches that uh, the guys at DW made me. It's pretty fun to play. Uh, there's some songs where I stand up and I play it just like, like I just did. Other songs where I actually use it like a third floor tom, like, like that. kind of a nice effect when you want that kaboom sound. What else? But there's also mallets in here to play the gong. We have a 40 inch Sabian gong back here that I have also had forever. Uh, probably since way back in the early Shakira days. Yeah, so. Like so. And then what else do we have? We have two little fans here on the floor. Uh, just to keep me from getting too sweaty during the show. Behind the gong is a sub, which is kind of cool. So this really makes your bass drum sound amazing on stage. 
So I recommend having one of these if you can, if your modern engineer will allow it. There's a huge difference with and without one. There's a little GoPro camera here that I use where I basically record every show I do and go back to the hotel room afterwards and watch it and analyze, criticize, self-punish myself for anything I did wrong and then play better the next day. So I've been doing that forever. Just I record everything I do just to, well, basically so I don't have to think about it during the show. I don't think about mistakes. I don't think about playing right or wrong. I just play and then when the show is over, I go back and I check it out and say, oh, that worked or oh, that didn't work. I recommend doing that. You don't even have to do it on a video. You can just do it on your iPhone or something. In-ear monitors, I use JH in-ear monitors and I have a hardwire pack here that they provided for me. I think it sounds a little better than using a wireless pack. So they were nice enough to accommodate me with a hardwire pack. Remo heads, these are coated emperors on the toms that's a coded ambassador on the 13 this is a coded cs dot on the 14. we have some percussion instruments too but uh my drum tech miro plays those off to the side of the stage when we need them morrissey picks out the drum heads they're custom every tour gets its own drum head miro makes them and he cuts out the little hole where it, wherever it works but it's all morrissey's artistic design he picks all the images that we use, or usually some kind of classic image that he found. Yeah, it's kind of fun because it's a surprise for us, right? When we, he just sends an image to, uh, to our drum tech, Miro, and uh, next thing I know, we have a new drum head for, for that month. Pretty cool. We have one coming up, and I want to show you for the next run because we have a UK tour uh, in, in, in a couple weeks. Yeah, so I guess maybe he has a catalog of bass drum heads that the, he, he <laughs> unveils. It's fun. Uh, for, as of now, um, I have several drum sets, but Morrissey actually likes this one, so I, I stick with this one for now. If he wants me to change it up and go with a different color or something, I will. But uh, he really digs this kit, so we're sticking with it for now. And what do you do with the drum heads when, you're, when you move on to the next one? It's a good question. Uh, we, don't some, <laughs> we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. It's a secret. They're in a vault. Morrissey stands over there. I start and stop. I start all the songs, so he'll just do a little speech, turn around and give me a, a look, or the guitarist MD Jesse will give me a look. We start the songs and we go. And like I said, we have a rotating catalog of music that we learned. And every day we get to the dressing room around four o'clock and there's a set list sitting on our table. That's today's batch of songs. We, that's why we have a set list here and we kind of organize how we're gonna do everything, like flowing between from song to song. Mm. Yeah, he picks all the songs and says, yeah, he, what's cool about it is he knows that he has a lot of repeat customers. His fans come show to show to show. So he doesn't want to give them a replica show of last night or the night before. So he tries to give everyone that buys a ticket their own experience. That's cool. So he will write a new set list for every audience. They, it could be similar, but he'll always swap out a couple songs and put in a couple new ones. And it's cool because it keeps the band on their toes. We have to get here and we, we sound check and rehearse every, every day. We don't phone it in because we want to make sure we're tight on all the alterations to the set list. But I also like that it's, it's kind of organic. Like I'm the only one who has any in-ears. Everyone else is just using wedges and just playing like a rock band. It's, so it's, it's a bit old school that way. But then I listen to the albums. And I also, in the end, put my own spin on things, like how I think uh, I'd like to play the songs. And usually when you do your own take on it, Morris is cool about that and he likes like, the interpretation. Yeah, he's never, he's, never, he's never given me any instruction in the drum department at all, other than just make it feel good, don't overplay, stay controlled. You know, he likes, he likes dynamics. He likes the softs to be very soft. He wants the rocking parts to be gritty and fierce and uh, so as long as you get those kinds of instructions correct it's cool fortunately i have miro here and he'll tell me if i'm missing a signature crash hit or <laughs> something he'll be like there's a, there's a crash on two going into this section i'm like thank you so he he uh that's good yeah no one else really in the band gives me much instruction as far as drum parts to play it's kind of up to me to to decide what works and doesn't work Mm -hmm. The chemistry with Morrissey and everybody else on stage, has that been from the start like really like easy to connect with everyone or was it a challenge? Well, I'm one of the new guys in the band. I've only been doing it for less than a year. 
I started last August. Uh, so, what is that, like 10 months I've been doing it. Some of these other guys have been doing the gig for 15 years. So they already have chemistry. And I kind of had to uh, do a little a quick study and get up to speed very quickly. And I just, I hope they approve of the way I'm doing it, but so far so good. Uh, Morrissey's been nothing but welcoming and gentlemanly to me. And uh, I feel very at home here. Yeah, everyone here has been super great. Alan, the other guitarist on that side of the stage, he's been in the band since 1990 or something, 91. So, man, he's an OG. He's great. I saw uh, your video of, uh, of uh, How Soon Is Now. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I wanted to ask I him, like, like, how do you do that little thing? He's so, so he's like, I'll show you. Yeah, he's, he's just, he's fantastic. He's got a great palette of sounds on the guitar. There's two guitars. They both play electric, but they sound great together. And uh, yeah, Jesse's the MD. And then, yeah, we have Gustavo and Juan. Our, uh, Gustavo's on keys. Juan is on bass. Joey, our production manager, trying to sneak by. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he makes the thing happen. Yeah. What's your uh, favorite song to play live? My favorite song to play live? Oof, that's really hard to say. It changes, changes from night to night. There were songs th that I really hoped he'd throw into the set. And he did. Like, uh, First of the Gang to Die, I love that song. Suede Head, I like playing Disappointed, this song, because it's kind of like, got a nice Tom tribal beat that's fun to play. The first show we did, we did uh, Shoplifters of the World Unite, and that's a classic song, so that was really fun to play. They're all fun, even the new ones. He's got, we're doing five unreleased songs in this set, and they're all fun to play. He's got a lot of great material, great songwriter, so it makes sound checking and playing the gigs a lot of fun. That makes it fun, yeah, certainly with the subwoofer and I mean, the stage. And all that. Yeah, I've been doing this long enough where I kind of, I, I think I know what, what makes a live rig work well and where pitfalls are and where things go wrong. So I try to have like backups and duplicates and things that make everything sound good. And I know if you're using electronics and you don't have wedges and monitors, things sound really weak on stage. So I always make sure if I can, I ask the monitor world for speakers. Not so loud that they blow away the, the lead singer, but we do that. I have, a, I have two belt packs so I can hear my in-ears in case one dies on stage. I have, obviously, we have extra snares, extra heads, extra sticks. We have extra everything. You're like over-prepared. Over-prepared. It's great because then you feel comfortable playing every night. We've got extra drummers backstage just in case, <laughs> just I, in case uh, yeah. I don't feel like showing up. What's, what's, the, what's the hardest song to play? It's a good question. I don't know if I have an answer for that. I think um, certain songs are just challenging to try to get the mood correct. Uh, like sometimes he really wants a certain song to be just as uh, moody as possible and trippy and to try to get that to sound good in a certain room. I would, that's probably it, is changing venue space. Like we just played a bunch of festivals outdoors and then bringing it here to this theater songs sound different. So to try to get that to adjust to the new room is, is probably a bigger challenge than actually playing the parts. Like making something sound really good outdoors at a festival and then making it sound equally good in a beautiful theater like this. You almost have to, sometimes you don't hit rim shots, sometimes you don't like really nail the open hi-hat as much, you kind of keep it half closed or all those kinds of things. You make little adjustments so it sounds good in that room that day. And that's probably a bigger challenge. Is that, that's more to do with the arrangements, right? And with the whole band together, do you feel like you guys all have to do that? We all have to do it. but individually as well. Yeah, we try to do it without even speaking about it verbally. We try to just do it automatically. We just all adjust so it sounds good. And then sometimes we'll talk about it afterwards. Like, that song sounded a little messy, or that song sounded, it didn't have enough punch, or whatever. And Morrissey will be also someone who'll chime in and say, hmm, song number three wasn't as strong as it was uh, last week. And we'll, we'll try to figure out why. It could be a sonic issue. It could be an interpretation issue. So that, I would say, is probably more challenging than just trying to execute the drum parts because I practice these things to death so I can play them in my sleep. Like, uh, I like to practice songs until they feel like I'm basically on autopilot. I never like to play the drums and say, Oh, what's coming up next? What? <laughs> How many bars is that outro? I don't remember. I, I like to have everything so dialed in 
that I can react more to the singer or the uh, the musicians around me, make them really comfortable. You can engage more with the rest of your bandmates. Exactly. But also the audience members too. You can probably enjoy the show more, look at them, feel into it. Yeah, I can do that too. But yeah, basically, I, I just I don't want to be sitting there counting bars. Four, five. Sit, well, I'm trying to get into a song, or I don't want to be sitting there saying, oh, what's the drum feel that goes into chorus three? I just want to just flow. I, I practice until I'm not thinking about anything anymore. I'm like a zombie up here and just feeling the music. Uh, so, yeah, so even if there are challenging drum parts, I don't know because I practice them so much that, <laughs> that I've kind of just got them under my belt now. You know what? There's a song called Sweet and Tender Hooligan. And that was uh, just, it's a pretty fast kind of punky beat. And it was hard to get it to feel right for me. I tried to, I, I first imitated exactly the way the Smiths drummer played it, and I watched a couple live videos. And then when I got it together, I thought it was a little bit loud and splashy, so then I, I kind of uh, brought down the volume a little bit, made it a little lighter feeling, and I think we nailed it. But that was, that was I remember it took a couple of days for me to get that song where I felt like it was happening. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, again, just like, just for a conversation's sake, not for the video, but like, when you say you over prepare, when you wanna like pr practice something, but you're here, let's say you're staying in this hotel, do you come here to practice? I will, uh, like, like the time we're using right now, we already did a sound check, but they haven't opened up the doors yet. So there's a, there's a good two hour period here where there's no one on stage. We don't have an opening act or anything. So we can do a sound check and then I can just stay up here and work if I want to. Yeah, everyone goes to dinner, so if I want to, you know, have some time alone up here with the drum set, I can do that. It's a lot better to do to shed a song on a kit as opposed to on your lap or on a drum pad or something because you're not really getting the the distances correct and the feel correct. But I'll learn a song first. I'll write, I'll chart it out, I'll listen to it, I'll tap it out, I'll memorize it in my head. But then I have to transfer it to the drum set so then it feels good. Uh, so yeah, but as much work as I can do at home, in my home studio prior to coming out here, uh, that's where I really get the, the bulk of it accomplished. And then it's last minute adjustments when I'm here.